Ever heard of the Ding Dong Theory? Well, if you like unsolved mysteries, here is a riveting one. Nobody knows where language came from, which drives the scientists mad. And it's a treasure hunt out there with tons of theories. And I dug up six of the best for you. Apparently the hardest problem in science is not dark energy, it's how on earth did humans first discover that they could speak and then turn this awesome skill into the first language. And the origin of language is one of the greatest mysteries in human science, because no matter what we dig up from the earth, there are no fossil words. Human bones have no trace of language on them, and if they did, well, can you imagine finding proof of what a Neanderthal sounded like? Forget about Spanish, we're talking Neanderthal this summer. Plato and Pythagoras said it, so it must be true. Language began when humans started naming things after sounds that they knew well from their everyday life. Waterfalls splashing, winds whistling, insects buzzing, animal calls. And the Bow Wow theory is all about imitating these natural sounds. So when humans started mimicking animal calls, it led to making sounds to refer to that animal. The hunter sees a wild pig, so he alerts the others by making a wild pig sound. And the next thing, a pig has a name, which is obviously... Okay, listen, this pig does not know what country he is in, and I don't think he cares, but as we all know, a pig says, all together now, oink. They don't sound. <laughs> but it is true, we don't have pigs. <laughs> oink. Hmm. See the problem here? Your language actually determines how you interpret a sound. And since we have many languages, we can't prove that human vocabulary comes from copied sounds. Also, how do you imitate the sound of a tree or a cave? What does a flower actually say? Is there really a connection between meaning and sound? Look, if you consider our amazing ability to imitate sound, it might have been a major player in the evolution of language. And if you're thinking about onomatopoeia, well, that's exactly it. But this theory cannot explain how sentences and grammar happened. All this. Maybe it's the other way around and the, the animals copied us. Interjections are spontaneous things that you just shout out and they're usually involuntary. You stub your toe on a rock, it hurts. You shout, ow, or something else. These are instinctive cries triggered by pain, pleasure, surprise, getting a fright. Laughing is another one. So maybe we discovered words completely by accident and these instinctive sounds eventually became more case specific. They deliberately use one sound to mean one thing, like Fred Flintstone over there. <coughs> nice scream, Fox. The objectors say that animals make interjections too and yet animals didn't develop language. So score one against poo-poo theory, ignoring the fact that animals physically cannot make words. I think we can do better than that argument. In China, we don't say, ouch. We say, ayo. This is true. Interjections are language specific. When did you last hear a baby say, ouch? A baby learns that word later. An English baby, that is. If it were natural and automatic to, to rather say, oi or ayo, then everyone would make the same sound. The only noises we all make the same are body noises like sneezing. Trust me, even laughing and crying can get some cultural influence. How amazing is this? When you get hurt, your pain response is automatic, but it's immediately filtered through your language. Do you realize we even scream in our own accents? It's pretty, pretty, it's pretty wild, really. So we're back to square one. Interjections themselves depend on language first. And another point I found interesting, normal speech involves deliberately saying vowels and consonants, but interjections don't care about vowels and consonants. And honestly, there just aren't that many interjections in any language, so this cannot be the source of language. What? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Actually, some people think this ancient way of talking with clicks might be the best clue we have to where it all began, but I'll make another video about that. Meanwhile, you can practice a different kind of clicking because I have three things that you can click here right now, especially that notification button, if you want to know about new videos when we release them.
I like this one because it's about cooperation between human beings. This theory claims that language and speech came from the sounds we made while doing hard work. You know, grunts, groans, chants. <laughs> Grunting is in our nature. It was the first language. But it was especially about groups of people doing some kind of rhythmic labor together where their songs would help them keep the rhythm going. They call it a heave ho sound system and it gives languages social context and interaction, which is nice. Hey, hey, rock and roll. Hey, hey, rock and roll. Yet we still have marching and working songs, and languages obviously have rhythm, so does this theory sound like it could have some legs? It's an interesting idea, but although it does explain the rhythmic features of human speech, it doesn't explain the origins of the sounds, or how the sounds acquired meaning and then turned into sentences. Also, they say it's unlikely early humans even had group activities until they reached the level where they were building elaborate structures, so there's got to be more to it. So this objection is, apes also grunt for social call, yet they can't speak. What do you think of this argument? Just remember, these are not my opinions, these are just other people's opinions, theories. By the way, if you find human languages fascinating and if you're enjoying this so far, well, this whole channel is full of stories about language learning, but stories don't stop there because here at Story Learning, we actually teach languages through stories too, because stories are the best way to learn any language. Stories are natural. It's how we learned our first languages, and we can use stories to learn a new language too, which is exactly what we do over here. So if you'd like to learn more about this, I put together a completely free story learning kit that shows you how to learn languages using the amazing power of stories. So if you're curious, check out the link below in the description and claim your free story learning kit. Here's one for the free spirits among you. Ding Dong Theory, the best named theory in the world, I'm sure we can agree, says that there is a mystic correlation between sound and meaning. Think of when you strike an object with something hard, it produces a particular sound or a vibration, and Primitive people were so in touch with nature that they could sense the essential quality of a thing. You know, you see a snake and you instinctively call it a snake. You might have actually heard about the booba kiki effect. Of these shapes is booba and which is kiki? I think this one is booba and this one is kiki. This is booba and this is kiki. They've tested this phenomenon in many cultures and even toddlers give the same answer 90% of the time. The belief is that a person's mind has a particular response to each aspect of the world around him, and maybe early humans just knew what a thing should be called. But just like the other theories, this one doesn't explain why or how they decided to give names to emotions and other things you can't hit and get a vibration from. So in the end, there's no hard evidence in any language of an innate connection between sound and meaning. Now, if only we could find some ancient enough writing, we could have a go at deciphering it, find the answers, and I could write some short stories in Neanderthal to add to my collection. But even the earliest written languages are only about five or 6,000 years old, so I guess we're out of luck. I love this one. We sang before we could talk. Songs have emotional power over languages and minds. That is definitely true. And La La Theory says that language came from sounds associated with love, song, poetry, playfulness, all the feels. And happy sounds turned into words. Cool theory, but the problem is that unlike cats, human sounds aren't reliable at all. When a cat purrs, the signal is direct evidence that it's content and relaxed, right? We know we can trust the purring signal because cats just can't fake that sound. But with people, words and sounds are all too easy to fake. <laughs> So if language began with singing our feelings, what about the huge gap between emotional and rational aspects of expressing ourselves? And come on, how can songs exist before words? Also, languages totally betray each other when it comes to what sound actually means. See the proof. But there's more. Have you ever tried to give a dog a bath, but try and convince him that he's not actually about to get a bath? 
Your dog thinks your acting skills suck, but a human might believe your horrible lies. Why? Well, there's an argument against La La theory that says that humans have mutual language trust, but animals don't, and a good theory of the origin of language must be able to explain why humans could begin to trust cheap signals, but not animals. Your pets are not fooled. There are a lot more weird theories yet to come, and I have one more about babies coming up, but so far, none of them are impressing modern linguists. They mostly think that these theories are all naive and irrelevant, and they were even banned once. But the thing is, each theory has something about it that gives us clues, and these days there are two main theory categories. It all happened all at once, or it was a slow evolution. That's it. So this happened to somebody, you know, some person in some small hunter-gatherer group, uh, underwent this change. The all at once thing is called discontinuity theory, and if you have heard of this guy, Noam Chomsky, he thinks one of our human ancestors had a genetic mutation that gave them the ability to speak and understand language. They passed it on to their offspring, and we've been talking ever since. Continuity theory is more like all of these others. It says language is so complex, it must have evolved over a very long time. Your ancestors had to adapt to living in the grasslands. And that's when they may have started to stand upright. This novel theory says language began because humans started walking upright. That was the, the missing piece. Early humans stood up, they lost their fur, and then babies could no longer hang on to their mothers, so mothers had to hang on to their babies. But mother needed her hands free to forage for food, so she put the baby down. You can totally tell something dazzling is coming up, can't you? Oh dear, now mum had to reassure baby that she hadn't abandoned her. Well, there you go. Mothers knew invented language. What do you say? Do you like that one? Like it? Hate it? Well, if you really think about it, this mother-baby thing has some merit because if adults and babies didn't ever communicate, no adult language could have ever evolved. I'm going to give it to you straight. Unless one of you invents a time machine, we are never going to know how or when language began. I'm sorry. It might have just come from all of these things or none of them. But you don't need a time machine to learn a new language, and you can get going right now with this cool video coming right up. Mm -hmm.